I cannot remember a time when IT evolved faster than it has over the last few years. Trends like digital transformation, work from anywhere, and the use of personal devices for work, all accelerated by the pandemic, are reshaping how businesses approach their network and security infrastructures. This ubiquity has tremendous benefits to employees and businesses, but it has also surfaced some questions about network and data security against surging and ever-evolving cybersecurity threats in this new hybrid, highly distributed world. Specifically, how can we secure apps in this cloud-first world while leveraging traditional networks that are hardware-centric and centrally located in data centers, which are expensive to operate and maintain? All these point products have been purchased over the years and bolted onto a centrally located security stack in the data center. Some of these products are used by network teams, others are used by security teams. The challenge is each product is independent with its own management and tooling in order to gain insights. In order to make sense of signals from this fragmented infrastructure, we must ingest logs from all the various products into a SIM. This of course takes a lot of time and effort just to be able to make sense of events and even then we're more reactive than proactive. When all the data was in the data center, we had all the visibility we needed. We could take packet captures of the traffic at every point. We could see the server applications and the endpoints. Troubleshooting for any incident, performance issue, security incident or outage was much, much easier. However, organizations are evolving more rapidly than ever before to remain competitive. They have become more virtualized, distributed and complex. They struggle to manage efficient and secure connectivity across their cloud environment. As company traffic flows have evolved, the network team has been challenged with a loss of visibility. It's no longer possible to see the traffic end to end since corporate traffic is now sourced from everywhere to destinations outside the data center. How can you troubleshoot performance issues? With a large portion of corporate traffic now running over the internet or in a cloud provider, a fog has formed over that complex mesh of traffic. The question to ask then is, how does this change impact network and and security strategy. Number one, it's no longer effective to backhaul all corporate traffic to an on-prem security stack for inspection. And number two, SaaS and public cloud traffic is dominated by data movement and that requires granular controls with sophisticated levels of access. A modern solution therefore needs to include both a zero trust approach along with advanced data protection integrated with contextual controls, instance awareness, activity controls, and much, much more. And remember, once data is moved or copied to a SaaS application, you, you no longer have any control. So all these security and data protection controls must be enforced in real time before the data is moved into any SaaS applications. With almost all of this traffic being encrypted, it also means enterprises need to decrypt and re-encrypt in order to have visibility and control for threats and data leakage. Backhauling to an on-prem encryption appliance is just not cost effective difficult to scale, and doesn't provide for a good end user experience. Today, the reality is the network and security teams have lost visibility and control. The traffic patterns have become a complete mesh network. Security teams have added technology after technology to fill these gaps. Each of these technologies created another problem. They're all fragmented, not integrated, creating additional complexity. Your security solutions need to work as one nervous system, one brain to be most effective. So how do enterprises address these modern challenges? Today, we're gonna to talk about three things. First, Elliot will cover the latest advancements in CASB and how through analyzing signals from multiple sources and bringing them together in one coherent view, we're extracting even more value out of your existing cloud security portfolio. After that, we've talked about how packet capture and analysis is such a critical tool for both security and network practitioners. Anant will talk us through a very exciting new tool for network and security operators, which will rectify that. We're calling it CloudTap. Finally, we've talked about how difficult it is to track and analyze performance with all these new traffic sources and destinations being outside of the traditional corporate network. Priyanka is going to walk us through how to solve these challenges by providing complete and accurate visibility in order to help identify and resolve user experience issues through our new proactive DEM capabilities. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the first one. Over to you, Elliot. All right, thanks, John. Hey, everyone. My name's Elliot, and I'm part of the Cloud Security Product Management Team. 
I'm really excited to spend some time with you all today and talk about Netscope's advanced CASB and how we protect your cloud services. Netscope's multimodal CASB solution contains several components that are essential in comprehensive cloud security. Each of these components themselves excels in its respective market, and we really keep pushing that lead in each one of them. Really quickly touching on some of the recent top highlights for each, each of these areas. For CASB Inline, we've added generative AI coverage as well as extended our public cloud coverage to well over 270 AWS services and 140 GCP services. Our Cloud Confidence Index, or CCI for short, is the largest app database with over 60,000 applications. We also now provide a dynamic assessment of the SaaS app attack surface exposure, which gets factored into calculating that specific app CCI score. Our CASB API is now running on a next generation upgraded platform that is even more performant and simpler to operationalize. And finally, for SSPM, we added several new application support, including Google Workspace, Confluence, and Jira. Uh, we've added to our already industry-leading coverage of security configuration compliance policies, as well as introduced visibility and risk assessment for third-party OAuth apps, which I'll touch on a little bit a little bit later. While each component is best of breed in its own right, we are extending our leadership and advancing the level of protection offered to customers by expanding the capabilities of the platform as a whole, sharing signals across products, and building meaningful integrations between these components in order to bring them together to become something more. Netscope's advanced CASB is driven by three core concepts. The first is enabling interoperability and context, context exchange between CASB components. I'll provide an example of this on the very next slide. The second is enabling interoperability and context exchange between CASB components and other Netscope products. For example, our borderless WAN product today has integrated CCI for QoS purposes. Basically, we're looking at CCI scores for applications and then automatically prioritizing bandwidth based on that score. The third is enabling ecosystem partners and customers themselves to extend the power of our CASB capabilities to their specific needs. Today, our cloud exchange product integrates, uh, has pre-built integrations to many different ecosystem partners. Our custom connector enables customers to bring their own application. This is already available for CASB inline and coming soon on the API side. DLP as a service enables partners or customers to upload exact data matches, fingerprints, images for ML classifiers, and in return, they receive DLP verdicts as well as details about DLP violations. So as promised, I'm going to walk through a basic example of how operationalizing context works between CASB components. The first step is utilizing API to harvest exposure labels and other contexts directly from the cloud services. Uh, today, our CASB API product does a lot of that. And then we share this context back in order to enrich CASB inline controls. So once we bring back this context, we can build inline policies that are powered by this context that we're fetching with API. So some of the example CASB inline policies that can be built using this context include blocking uploads of sensitive content to specific folders or SharePoint sites that have been identified with external exposure by CASB API. You can also block uploading of sensitive content to channels in Slack or Microsoft Teams that have been identified with external users, also with context being fetched by CASB API. By being able to leverage these additional signals, the practitioner is able to set much more granular controls, which allows them to enable more business workflows without compromising on risk. So that means at the end of the day, end users also benefit by being less inhibited at work. And then ultimately the practitioner also receives the benefit of having less alerts to process. The key to making contextual policies really valuable is, surprise, surprise, getting more context. So how do we get more context? When it comes to CASB, as well as icebergs, we talk a lot about the things that are really, really easily seen. DLP, threat, UEBA, these are things that CASB has traditionally delivered. And this has been the talk track for a long time in cloud security, which makes a lot of sense because the sheer quantity of stuff that's already in the cloud and continuing to go into the cloud uh, just continues to grow. So we can already get a lot of context about data from CASB API. 
But as with icebergs, uh, lurking below the surface is a lot more stuff that threatens data security. Configurations, privileged users, third-party apps, devices. These are all things that SSPM really surfaces. So while the market talks a lot about SSPM monitoring and protecting configurations, what we built goes far and beyond just that. And, and is really the visibility and risk assessment feature of advanced CASB. So while context at the end of the day can come from any CASB component that I showed you earlier, there's a treasure trove of untapped context that's being extracted from cloud services via API. And SSPM is one of the engines that provides this additional visibility and risk assessment for our advanced CASB. One huge blind spot that SSPM is servicing today is third-party OAuth applications. Nearly 14,000 marketplace apps exist just amongst Microsoft, Google, and Salesforce ecosystems. There's an even greater number of custom applications and usage, which are potentially even riskier due to the fact that they have, they have a lack of rigorous development process, there's a lack of documentation, and quality controls that most marketplaces have in place. So the first step to getting this visibility via API is utilizing SSPM to pull context for both marketplace and custom third-party applications, and then using our proprietary dynamic risk scoring algorithm to calculate risk based on the app's configured permissions and scopes. So these scores end up being unique to each customer. Step two, is sending these SSPM results to CCI to calculate a tenant-specific risk score. And then as with the example that I showed earlier, all of this, all of this context, all this information can then be utilized in CASB inline policy for much more granular control uh, and remediation of third-party OAuth applications. All right, so to wrap things up today, what can you expect from us moving forward? We're continuing to innovate and pushing to be the best in each of the CASB component categories. We'll leave no stone unturned to uncover hidden risks and provide you even more visibility into risk insights and context about what is happening within all of your cloud services. And all of the advancements and all of the efforts that we're making uh, in terms of product development are really motivated by increasing business value for you. Uh, for advanced CASB, this specifically means one, enabling frictionless security, reducing impact on the end user productivity, thanks to enhanced risk visibility and consolidated policy actions, and two, providing superior risk mitigation. Uh, this means providing contextual, granular controls that will enable you to more broadly adopt blocking actions and coaching to reduce your organization's overall security risk. So that's it for me today. I appreciate you all for tuning in. And now, here's my colleague, Anant, who will cover our CloudTap initiative. Thanks, Elliot, for your uh, wonderful presentation. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Anant Mathur. I am part of a product team. And today I'm going to talk about a very popular, very important capability, packet capture, also known as you know, traffic mirroring. Uh, when I say this is very popular capability, because we have seen most of our customers you know, using this capability to solve multiple use cases. Uh, we have seen customers doing you know, network monitoring to application performance monitoring. Uh, we have also seen customers you know, doing tra deep traffic analysis to optimize their policies. We have seen you know, uh, customers who use uh, third-party solutions, third-party tools like you know, NDR, network detection response. Uh, they feed the copy traffic to these kind of tools to build deeper contextual you know, visibility or you know, identify threats. Third use case that we have seen uh, is especially from um, federal customers or you know uh, or financial customers where they have a strict requirement to store tra traffic for a certain duration of time, so that in case of you know um, mal uh, malware outbreak or you know malicious attack, they can go back uh, and and retrospectively analyze the stored traffic to uh, to identify what went wrong. Now. These are the couple of you know high-level use cases that customer solves that uh, solve with packet capture, but there are multiple other use cases that we have we have seen customer uses uh, you know packet capture kind of capability to solve. Now, when a customer is in uh, you know on-premises deployment, things uh, are a little different because we are talking about one network. Uh, 
usually customers you know use a span port on the switch they copy traffic send it to some kind of tool it can be an ndr solution it can be an ids device or it can be an object store where they simply you know store uh, copy traffic in a packet format but with the digital transformation and cloud adoption we are not talking about one network we are talking about you know multiple network there is a customer a customer network there is a netscope network or the cloud network and what customers are you know with this journey what customers wants to do is to capture traffic in the cloud and that is exactly what we are solving so we are building a packet capture capability also known as you know cloud tap that will uh, enable customers to do uh, packet capture in in the netscope cloud or we can also say netscope you know point of presences what they have to do is uh, um, they have to provide us some kind of uh, you know object store where we can write capture traffic to now that particular object store can be on you know on a public cloud or it can be on a, on premises um we in a phase 1 of our solution we are going to address you know public cloud deployment um, and we are going to address all uh you know popular public cloud gcp or aws and azure so what customers have to do is to provide uh, an object store running in this part in in their in their uh, you know um, network on these cloud and uh, we will transfer uh, uh traffic from capture traffic from netscope data centers to uh customers you know public cloud environment uh over encrypted uh end to end encrypted channel and will write that traffic to the object store apart from other traffic we are also going to write session keys to the object store and this is very important because we don't decrypt traffic in 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 our environment and then send the decrypted traffic uh to the customer environment be it over encrypt you know end to end and encrypted channel we want to make sure that you know we don't send any decrypted traffic uh over any any channel be it encrypted or you know unencrypted so we will also you know write a uh, session key separately uh to the customer environment now the important thing is you know decryption because uh, it's it's uh, decryption is you know um um uh, an overhead it needs capacity um as and you know it's 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 tedious to you know uh, provide a decryption uh, technology by customers so what we are going to do is also provide customer tools uh, that will marry the session keys and the uh, the captured traffic that is transferred to the object store it will decrypt uh, the traffic and then customers can you know send it to third party tools like in you know, ndr solutions or uh, they can you know store traffic in a pk format for you know retro retrospective analysis so net net uh, what we are talking about is you know capturing traffic on a cloud transferring it to customer environment or you know over a secure channel provide decryption kind of capability and then you know uh, providing ability or capability uh, to send it to you know either for further deeper analysis or store it in a pk format now this particular capability will enable customers to you know to adopt uh you know uh to uh to adopt cloud faster or it will enable cloud uh, you know transition faster because these kind of capabilities are not well supported on the cloud and this is where, what we are building uh you know and enable customers for the smoother cloud uh, transition also it will enable customers to enhance their detection capabilities their visibility capabilities through integration with third party tools and for our financial customers and you know for um, you know federal customers they can stay compliant uh, by storing pcap storing traffic in a pcap format and then do the retrospective analysis if required so this is what i wanted to you know talk about uh, uh, regarding this particular capability at a high level uh, and with that i'm going to i'm going to you know give control to priyanka who is going to talk about digital experience management uh, which is again a very very key capability that we are building Thank you for your time uh, and over to you Priyanka. Thank you so much Anand for that fantastic overview of Cloud Tap. With that, let's dive into another interesting topic, digital experience management. Now, as we start talking about digital experience management, let's look at why digital experience management became an integral solution, became an integral part of the network infrastructure and it operation teams tool set it starts with the old network perimeter and the definition of which basically meant entities like users endpoints servers applications 
all of those were contained inside the typical castle and moat architecture. Now, when you think about what that evolved to, the new network perimeter meant that that entire format of that corporate network changed. For example, mobile devices became an acceptable mode of accessing corporate information. Users, uh, like contractors and vendors, as and part-time employees, it became acceptable for these user groups to access corporate information, to have access to sanctioned uh, applications. Applications themselves went from being part of that premise, um, you know, the premise-based network to being hosted out of, you know, SaaS-based services. They went on to be being hosted in public cloud, in private clouds, and even data centers owned by organizations. The previously known corporate network changed in this brave new world of network transformation. Network transformation, along with the benefits that it brought, did bring some operational gaps with it. Now, it starts with the fundamental level of visibility that organizations typically had reduced significantly with apps moving to the cloud. Now, along with that lack of visibility, that reduction in visibility, came a limited set of controls that was now available to the network infrastructure and IT operations teams in order to manage access, in order to enable productivity, enable secure access to these applications. Along with that came the fact that there was little to no proactive alerting that enabled these teams to be notified in case of a significant event or when critical thresholds were being approached. When you put all of these pieces together, for an organization from a KPI perspective, that meant that the mean time to detection of an issue and the mean time to resolution of that issue increased significantly. What organizations really wanted in this new transformed corporate network was that end-to-end -end visibility in the context of user, the device, the application that was being accessed to account for the participation of critical contributors like the device, the connectivity path, the SASE or SSE service that was being used as well as the application to account for the experience of a user which eventually translated into productivity for the user and at a high level um, spoke to the business objectives that the organization had set forth for itself. In order to accomplish this level of visibility, organizations started using a variety of different tools, one of which was pure monitoring tools. Now with pure monitoring tools, it's important to acknowledge that they have gaps in their visibility. When you look at the traffic that traverses through a SASE service, pure monitoring tools have visibility till the front door of that SASE service. But beyond that, when the traffic traverses through the SASE service all the way to the application, pure monitoring solutions lose context of that aspect of the traffic. They lose visibility into that massive passage, that transit of the traffic, the life of the packet. That ends up being a significant gap for these pure play um, solutions when it comes to providing that end-to-end -end visibility. Now, SASE SSC solutions themselves started building digital experience man monitoring capabilities. But these solutions built by our competitors also have significant gaps. And the gaps in these competitive solutions stems from two facts. One, if the organization itself does not own the infrastructure that their services are, are running on, they don't have the level of visibility right down to the node, the process, the resource level, to be able to account for how their service contributes to that end-to-end -end experience that the user goes through. Now, similarly, the other, um, the other reason why there's a gap in this visibility is when these solutions only rely on synthetic monitoring to account for the contribution of their service the, uh, to the end-to-end -end user experience, it does not represent the policy enforcement aspect of their service when applied on top of real user traffic. And that in turn means you don't have true accountability of this critical hop that sits between the user and, the traf um, and their destination when processing massive volumes of traffic. Now here at Netscope, when we looked at this problem space and we built a solution, 
We thought about solving all of these aspects. And by way of that, we introduced the industry's first proactive digital experience management capability. Our BEM solution provides capabilities like predictive insights, which relies on an innovative monitoring methodology called smart monitoring, which combines the benefits of real user monitoring and synthetic monitoring to provide the most comprehensive perspective of a user's experience and eventually the application's impact on the organization. In addition to that, our DEM solution also provides 360 degree control on every aspect of the traffic all the way from the source to the destination. To add to that, our Netscope New Edge infrastructure provides proactive remediation capabilities and self-healing features, which constantly optimizes for a high quality, seamless user experience for the traffic that's transiting through Netscope. With these three significant aspects of our proactive DEM solution, we're changing the conversation from reactive monitoring to true proactive user experience management. Now, DEM is an integral absolutely core component of the Netscope SASE platform. It accounts for that true view into how the Netscope platform provides very, very critical security services without performance trade-offs. And it's important to understand that our DM solution provides this while continuing to enable the one console, one agent, unified policy, single pass architecture that stays true to the zero trust principles. Now, as you consider this end-to-end -end visibility and you consider the four zones of uh, visibility, what, is, what we see as a very critical aspect is really that hop the SASE service uh, accounts for. And when you look at, as I was talking about the competitive solutions, when you look at that, we, you get a single number that accounts for a synthetically measured contribution of that service to that end-to-end -end view. But this is not the true accountability that you require of um, a critical service like a SaaS or an SSE service. Here at Netscope, what we're essentially building for is providing that true accountability by giving you perspective of the transaction spending five milliseconds in the Netscope platform because SWIG policies were applied to it, or the fact that it spent eight milliseconds in the Netscope service set because in addition to the SWIG policies, our threat protection policies were applied to it, or 20 milliseconds because all of these services were applied to that transaction, or in you know accounting for true transparency, 20 milliseconds where only the SWIG policy was applied to it because SWIG was running in a non-optimal capacity. That's the level of transparency that we're building for. Now, when you look behind the scenes, it's very important to understand that when you account for this contribution of the SASE service to the end-to-end -end user experience, there is a need to understand the context of that workflow. So here, let me give you an example of when a user is attempting to access a particular application, when their transaction transits through the NS proxy service, you see an end-to-end -end latency number, a response time that's associated with it that tells you, hey, 15 milliseconds is within the acceptable realm for a transaction with this context. The same user, when accessing another application, may actually require that payload to traverse through our threat services, which means if the threat service is running in a non-optimal capacity, where the latency is 25% higher than normal, it manifests itself as um, a deviation from the baseline where when you look at the end-to-end -end response time, you can very clearly see that it took 30 milliseconds right now, which deviates from the otherwise normal baseline of 20 milliseconds. When it comes to any other service that's being utilized within the Netscope platform, the same level of accountability is being built for. You would have a perspective that tells you whether the service that utilized a remote browser isolation capability was within that acceptable realm of 20 milliseconds or not. This is where the complexity of what happens behind the scenes becomes imperative to understand to account for that true, uh, that true contribution to that end user experience that you eventually see. Now, when we look at that end-to-end -end visibility, within our solution, we account for every single aspect of it, starting with, let's say, the device health. Now, we exhibit the device health and its performance 
by showcasing a variety of different metrics, starting from resource consumption like CPU usage, memory usage, network throughput, as well as accounting for networking device events that are occurring on the device at that point in time. Now, you're not just relegated to looking at these metrics at a high level from a percentage of usage perspective, but you also get visibility into a deep down process level view that tells you what applications or what processes were running on the device at a point in time when a certain performance was determined for that particular device. Now, the next as aspect is the connectivity path to Netscope. We provide the all important hop by hop view for that connectivity path to account for the packet loss and latency observed on every single hop that is incurred along the path from the user's device all the way to the application. Now, it's important to also understand that as we provide this, we give you a perspective of every network path by way of intelligent pop selection that the client may have performed in that duration to ensure that when the client connects to um, another pop, you're seeing visibility of that network path in that entire view all the way to the application. So this hop by hop takes into account the context of the network path being used to connect from the device to the Netscope service and onwards to the application. Moving on, like I said, the time spent in Netscope is extremely important to account for this critical hop called Netscope in the end-to-end -end, uh, user experience. And the way we account for it is based on real user traffic being processed in our services at that point in time to provide you that true perspective of the amount of time spent to process that traffic and eventually determine based on policy enforcement whether that um, activity is allowed or blocked. Finishing up the story, you have accountability of the application response time. Now we we'd identify this application response time based on real user traffic that traversing from that particular pop all the way to the application and visualize it for our customers using the pop to app round trip time, which accounts for the server response time that is incurred after the transaction is processed by Netscope and is now awaiting for a response back from the application. We provide a complete coverage of this perspective by providing an end-to-end -end response time as well that gives you a very clear picture of the end-to-end -end response time observed on the user's end in the context of the device, the application, and the point in time that they've been operating in. Now, as we built the solution, as we built these features, we've kept in mind the landscape that we operate in. And as a result, we built a solution in a manner that accounts for that true user experience management. The way we do this has um, incorporated several differentiators into our solution. The first of which is what we call a smart monitoring. Smart monitoring is an innovative monitoring methodology that we built here at Netscope, which brings together real user monitoring and contextual synthetic monitoring to provide the most comprehensive perspective of your user's experience by accounting for the traffic traversal in and um, inside and outside the tunnel. The second aspect that we incorporate here in the solution is proactive application monitoring. Now, proactive application monitoring is enabled because we're looking at real user traffic. We're accounting for the life of the packet as it traverses through the Netscope platform. Now, proactive monitoring also bring forth, uh, brings forth a significant benefit to our customers by way of zero-touch deployment. Proactive app monitoring accounts for critical sanctioned applications being used by our customers' organizations, and it, it monitors the traffic for those applications without requiring customers to actually configure a significant amount of um, controls or settings. The third aspect is automatic remediation. Now, the benefit of automatic remediation is offered by way of the new edge architecture utilizing um, its self-healing features to constantly account for, um, you know, a route optimization, to constantly account for a high quality user experience by ensuring that we have proactive monitoring of applications being employed across all of our customers, across all of the users constantly. And finally, real time spent in Netscope, which gives you that true picture of how Netscope as a critical hop contributes to that end-to-end -end experience. We've taken this path of building our solution with these significant differentiating aspects to ensure that as a customer, you constantly have the most complete picture of your user's experience. And in that process, 
understand the contributor to an impact or a degradation to that user's experience. Now, as you may have heard, a few weeks ago, we announced an acquisition of Kadiska, a standalone DEM solution organization. Now, what's interesting about Kadiska's acquisition and um, the way we went about it was that as we looked at Kadiska's solution, their technologies, the team had built these solutions, these technologies, with this, the, the same perspective that Netscope DEM team has had around solving the experience management perspective. The Kadiska team also looked at accounting for real user experience by bringing together the context of the user and employing synthetic testing to augment that real traffic. Fundamentally, we aligned in our thought process of um, the fact that synthetic monitoring alone cannot provide you with that accurate measurement of a user's experience and help you triage when a user's um, activity or their attempt to perform an action frustrates them. What's interesting is the capabilities that Netscope DEM has, has um, compl is complemented very well by Kadiska's technologies. Um, as part of our smart monitoring capability, we utilize the Netscope client and the Kadiska team has a browser extension as well as a VM-based and mobile app-based monitoring capability that brings it together to provide this perfect picture of the real user experience. Bringing these capabilities together means we are able to expedite the delivery of that complete user experience view by way of our digital experience management capability to our customers. The benefits that this brings forth is First, a coverage across all forms of deployment and all steering methods that are used by our customers. This flexibility extends to account for monitoring with third-party SD1 solutions as well. We provide a perspective of site-to-app monitoring, which gives you accountability for traffic as it's steered through Netscope, as well as any user activity or traffic that's traversing outside of the Netscope context. So it provides you, it'll provide you with the ability to monitor traffic steer through Netscope as well as traffic that's bypassing Netscope. Now, looking forward, we see that we'll be able to provide a, an innovative adaptive monitoring capability, which essentially means that your monitoring will be able to adapt to the most critical context of the actions that your user is performing. For example, if in the last five minutes we've seen your user's context shift, their behavior, the usage pattern exhibit that they're now utilizing app X versus app Y, monitoring needs to adapt to that new context that's been established to account for that application that has now become critical for your user's um, objectives for them to be able to perform the actions that they need to and be productive. This brings us to the aspect of being able to expedite and build for this complete picture of user experience, application performance, and network performance accountability in our digital experience management solution. As we look forward to providing these capabilities, it has become imperative that we do so by ensuring that we're extending these capabilities, we're, we're accounting for true user experience and providing our customers with all of the visibility, with all of the capabilities that they need to ensure that they can continue to extend their, you know, the level of security to maintain their own security, their organization security posture without any performance trade-offs. With that, I'll pass this back to John to share his thoughts. So that summarizes the one, two, three punch we are delivering to help your organizations regain visibility and control with a cloud-delivered SASE platform. These innovations underscore one of the great things that separate Netscope from other SASE and SSE solutions out there. The unparalleled end-to-end -end visibility and control we can deliver provides extensive context that leads to better security and connectivity outcomes. But that's not all. 360 data protection gives you the ability to extend the industry's most comprehensive security controls to data wherever it resides, lowering your security risk. Our fast and resilient new edge infrastructure features best-in-class availability and latency rates, leading to superior user experience and better business agility. Our unified platform brings together a converged security service edge with our borderless WAN technology, leading to lower costs and less complexity. 
Stay tuned for the rest of the day as we'll be discussing how SASE can help your organization solve a number of pressing challenges, including how we use AI and machine learning to improve security, full VPN replacement, transforming your network with borderless SD-WAN, adopting zero trust principles, and empowering the hybrid workforce. Then we'll wrap up the day with some great demos showcasing SASE in action. There's something here for everyone, so please stick around and enjoy the day. Thank you. Thank you.